Hello, this is Ari Wickes, and I am joined by the legendary Akiva Poppers. We are back for our first or second episode, however you want to look at it, for the Yeshiva League Pass Tip-Off podcast. We have a great show planned for you today. Um, really, it's an MVP show. We got two killers from uh, different tournaments, MVPs of their of their respective tournaments. We got Aiden Vitron from the MVP of the Globerman tournament and Benny Kangaroo Kata, the MVP of the Cooper tournament down in Memphis. We are going to have a great show. We're going to bring them on in a moment. First, we wanted to welcome our first two advertisers of the season. We have CoolKeepers.com, who is located in Teaneck, New Jersey, and they are all your needs for custom yarmulkes, bar mitzvahs, swag. They have uh, cool tzitzis, everything that is, is great about um, Judaica right now. Go to CoolKeepers.com. We'll mention their websites. You'll see them on the screen. Check them out. It's really great. I know them personally. And, uh, you know, if you're looking to make a bar mitzvah and you wanted to get some great stuff, they have it. Not just keepers. They have a lot of things. And their tzitzis are really, you know, with tzitzis out uh, Friday to support Israel, they've really been doing something uh, special. So that's one. And then we have Holy Schnitzel, which is uh, synonymous with good food. They are located in uh, Cedarhurst, New York. They have chains all across the country. Uh, Holy Schnitzel, where you can get all your chicken, all your salads, you, whatever you want to do, you can find something. And it's really great for uh, a late night, you know, championship game and you want to celebrate afterwards, head down to Holy Schnitzel. So those are our two advertisers. And now, speaking of two, we're, this uh, segment of our, our Players of the Week is brought to you by CoolKeepers.com. Uh, I should actually mention um, with Aiden and, and, and Benny, you're going to be getting a $10 gift certificate to CoolKeepers.com. So you'll be able to... Uh, Go online. I'll send you that information afterwards where you can guys can go and, uh, you know, purchase something for maybe your coaches want a new keeper. Maybe you want one for yourself. Uh, wh whatever you want to do, you'll be able to check it out. But now, without further ado, we bring in the uh, two MVPs, Aiden Bitron from Shalhevit and Benny Kata from Flappush. So, Poppers, first of all, are you excited to uh, to have this? I mean, how, how much we had to compete with ESPN, ABC, Fox Sports, <laughs> and they agreed to come in the Yeshiva League past tip-off to uh to do these do these interviews with us well there's no better place to do an interview than the issue really past tip off show right so absolutely I, and obviously we get both coast representation here which is nice to have and a couple of studs right and, and, and uh you know potential uh sarah check matchup but that's way down the road we're going to talk about you know what just transpired so we're going to start this question is going to be to both of you we'll start with aiden just because his first name is a so it goes before b um, Aiden, the question is, first of all, welcome, congratulations on the uh, tournament. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, I was able to see it firsthand as you beat the Ramaz Rams in the championship game. Phenomenal game. It was uh, back and forth and you were, uh, you know, I've never seen a kid have 27 points and think it was a quiet 27, but uh, you did it. You know, you, you leave it all on the court. You were great. So my question to you is going into, into Globerman, obviously it was, it was a, a really nice field of teams. Who were you looking at as um, your potential biggest threat and why? As far as regarding all the teams, who was your potential biggest threat and uh, why Why was that? Um, well, first off, thank you for having me. Um, but our biggest threat was probably EULA. I want to say I know that they're pretty good this year. Coming into the tournament, we're like, you know, uh, like, we don't know too much about the East Coast teams. So, you know, we're like, all right, EULA is probably the team that, we want to face off. We we want like you know we want to see us play against them. They're probably the best team in the tournament from the beginning. You know that's what we were thinking, but yeah, it was Eula. Right. So that was uh, yeah, and and I and I would agree when 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 we looked at the teams in the tournament and, and Poppers and I spoke about it. Um, also, we were like you know Eula returned a lot of players, a really strong team. L.A., they have that, uh, you know, the rivalry with you guys in Valley Torah now in the past couple of years coming up as well. So, yeah, I, I agree that was probably, uh, you know, something to keep your your um, on, on your radar. But fortunately or unfortunately, it didn't happen. But uh, but you will you do play them later on in the year, correct? Yeah, yeah we do. OK, gotcha. So now, Benny, in, uh, in, uh, and I've kind of nicked you nicknamed you Kangaroo Kata. So I, I asked him off air and he said, that's cool. So that's, uh, you know, if you've ever seen Benny play. He's a, the way he jumps is basically a kangaroo. He's up, he's down, and before anyone else could even jump once, he's already jumped twice. So that's uh, you know, that's his game. So you were in the uh, Cooper tournament in Memphis. Sixteen teams um, all across the country uh, represented from all coasts. Um, 
who was your your team that you were saying, okay, this is a team we're probably going to see at some point or in the finals, and they're the team that we uh, really need to be uh, keyed in on? And, uh, you know, why do you feel about that about that team? All right. So first, I want to say thank you for having me on this podcast. Uh, and second, uh, we didn't we view every team as a threat. We don't really, you know, take plays off against a certain team because that shows. So we just go out there and we just do what we have to do. But obviously, there were some teams like like North Shore, Magnum. Well, oh, okay, but only give us one. We're not going to let you get away with all of them. But go ahead. <laughs> I mean, going into the tournament, we knew we were going to have to play either one of them, either North Shore in the semis or Magan in the finals. So I can't really choose one, but I would have to choose Magan since, you know, they beat us a couple of weeks ago. Right. And then so that that was the team. And obviously, I guess coming off of that, you know, gr great game. I mean, talk about Shalhevitz championship back and forth in, 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 your Mag in the Magan David tournament. It was similar. I believe it was foul shots by uh, Haber, I want to say, you know, similar six seconds left. Went to the line, calmly hit hit one, or I think it was one of two to put them ahead. So you know, obviously that's a rival for you, and uh, you know something tells me you're going to see them again, uh, maybe one, two, or three, or four more times down down the road <laughs> this season. Yep. All right, and, and by the way, I should also as uh, as a disclaimer, just uh, let everyone know these questions were not spoken to about with these two MVPs. So they're handling these these questions like MVPs. They have no idea the questions that they're coming uh, that we're coming out with. You know, Poppers and I obviously did come up with it, but just so you know, because that Kata's answer was like that's almost as if, you know, he was already reading a script. So <laughs> good job there, Benny. All right, Pop, you're up. Yeah. That was good stuff. Now I'm curious, back to Benny, um, because your game is very well rounded for Yeshiva League big. Um, right. Oftentimes we'll see Bigs in the Yeshiva League where they, you know, they can do one thing or two things, but you know, your game for a big is pretty well rounded. I, I want to hear your thoughts on what you think is the biggest strength of your game, um, but also what your biggest biggest weakness is. What you think you need to do to improve on in order for you guys to win a championship this year? What do you think? So I definitely think my strength is just my, it's just my impact on defense, just being there. It's not even my athleticism or my length. I think it's just me, my presence just kind of, you know, throws teams off. And uh, I would definitely say that a weakness of mine is my – I could go with my free throw shooting, uh, but I could also go with just giving it my all at all times, like always being awake and always, you know, being active. So I, either one of those. Listen to Benny. He doesn't want to give out his weaknesses on air, so he's just giving an effort. You know, he's he's smart, this guy, right? <laughs> Ari, he, also gave, left. he also gave two weaknesses at the same time. Right, right, right. Exactly, right. He's, he's going to keep us everyone thinking. But, yeah, Benny, I, I've seen you. I, like I said, I've seen your, your game um, firsthand. And also, I actually even remember you as a sophomore um, in the Boca tournament, um, a great JV tournament. You know, you were just – you were the eraser. It was like almost as if – the other guys on your team didn't have to play defense because you were you were you were staying down down low, and even if you beat those guys, you were there and you were just you know you know a, a wrecking crew back then. So uh, that's uh, some, some good stuff. So Aiden, my question to you is: You've won the the, the Globerman tournament the past two years. Um, you're only a junior, so my question is: Last year you were a sophomore against Valley Tora. It was a hyped up game. I, I was there. The, the crowds was insane. The environment was incredible. Again, only as a sophomore, I believe you started. I know you played big time minutes and you were sent to the foul line down by two or one, whatever it was, you'll, you'll tell me exactly. And you calmly sank three foul shots to lead to propel the uh, Firehawks over Valley Torah. So that was last year's team. You won the championship because of, of the a bucket you hit. This year, you're a junior and you were the MVP of the Goldberman tournament. And, you know, you had 27 points. You probably averaged the most points throughout the tournament. How do you compare? And you got to pick one. Is there one that's greater based on your accomplishments last year and, and, and what happened or what transpired this past this uh, past week in uh, California? Uh, so last year, we were actually up by two before I hit the three free throws. Uh, oh, we were sorry. We were down by two. We were down by two. Right? Uh, um, yeah. So, um Honestly, they're both great accomplishments. I mean, I, I, I don't know which one's greater. I mean, I can't worry, really. Listen, Ryan, Ryan Coleman is not going to bench you for the answer. Don't worry. You're, you're going to get playing time. So 
just if you if you had to choose one, you know, based on on those, you know, how you feel, and there's no wrong answer. Obviously, we just want to uh, we want to put you on the spot. You know, you're good under pressure. It, honestly, it was probably last year. I want to say, just because it was more of like a me moment. Like you know, I had I, like I had the free throws to shoot. Like this year, we had Yakov, which props to him. You know, he hit the free throw, big shot. But like last year, it was like more of like a me type of you know moment. So. I want to say last year, but again, this year it was like more of like my team, you know, like making sure everything was run well, like all that stuff. So, but it was probably, it was probably last year. Got it. There we go. We finally, we got an answer out of him. Good. Thanks, Aiden. All right, Pop. <laughs> what, what do we yeah. got? What do we got next? We, we told, listen, we didn't, we, we should have warned you guys that, you know, we're going to celebrate you tonight, but we're going to put you on the spot also because, uh, you know, big time players can handle this type of moment. So, you know, this is all, all good stuff. Go ahead, Bob. Right, and and also, I think that's that's how you get the most genuine answers and the most interesting responses, which obviously the, the people watching are interested in hearing. Um, this one's for both you guys. Um, obviously, Benny's got more to choose from. Um, he's in, in the Yeshiva League, whereas Aiden, you're not in the Yeshiva League, uh, but you know you've you competed against a lot of Yeshiva League players uh, in Kloberman and Sarachek. Uh, so I want to hear what you think. Who do you think is the best player you've played against from the Ashiv League, and and why you think they were so tough to go up against? Um, honestly, I think I think the toughest player uh, I played against was uh, I don't I don't, I don't know how you say it, last name Shanzer last year. Yeah, Akiva Shanzer. Yeah, Shanzer. Yeah, um, I actually played against him. A few years back in Detroit, Maccabi, and then they got to play against him last year. In the semifinals for Sarachek, so I want to say him. Why is that? What what made him so great? Um, he's it, it just he's like a big point guard, you know. He's, he's like he's a hard to guard. He, he's very like bulky. It's, it's he's like he, he's like Zion Williamson playing point yeah, guard. Yeah, exactly. He's like a smaller <laughs> Zion. Yeah, yeah. He's even a lefty, so it kind of you know he has that like shot put shot. It's, yeah, uh, that's true, I've yeah, heard yeah. that comparison before. I mean, the Jewish Zion, you know, like Zion, <laughs> whatever they call him. So, <laughs> Where are you, right, Benny? Benny, Benny, let's hear it from you. And you, you, you know, this people are gonna put this on their board, so you got to give us a big answer. You got to face these guys every night. So I would have to say probably Alex Zakon. He's just he's just way too good. He, his scoring ability is insane. He's tall. He's quick. He's shifty. He could do whatever you need, the left or right. It's it's almost impossible to guard him. And he beat us. He beat us in the semis last year. So he's definitely one. And if if I had to say one, like personally, it would probably be like Asher Milana just guarding him. He is just a beast. He's just really big inside. Uh, he'll back you down. He'll catch it on you. He'll always get position on you. So yeah, those are my two. Pop, did did you notice they both? I mean, they both went with guys from last year. They don't want. They don't want to get any. <laughs> they don't want to. They're not scared yeah. of anyone this year. That's uh, it's, it's no, no no issues, no worries. No. So no, no, that these are that's some great stuff. All right, so this is going to be the um, my one my final question. Then Pop has one more for you guys. So you both come from great programs, and you both have you know Coach Coleman at Shaw Hebbett, legendary coach. You brought in Flappers has uh, Matthew Malk, who uh, they really revamped Flappers, their entire coaching staff, brought in, a, you know, a basketball operations director and Morris Dweck and, you know, uh, Adam Ginsberg is a basketball guy, the athletic director. So really two big time coaches. So I'm going to start this one with you, Benny. So my question is, what is what is your Matt, uh, Malk's philosophy? What does he do? Is he a defensive oriented guy? Is, is he an offensive guy? You know, what's his philosophy when he came in and starts the season with you guys this year and said, this is the type of team we are going to be, and people are going to have to beat us being our style. You know, what, what is that for him? So it's definitely uh, defense. We play a really uptight defense. Uh, we try to not let you catch the ball, and we basically turn that into our offense. We play defense, we rebound hard, and we run the floor. Uh, and it's been working, so <laughs> pass him. <laughs> and uh, additionally, I wanted to say that – he he does not let us take plays off. Uh, he told us in that championship game, it's really hard to win a championship. You cannot take one play off or else it'll show. 
And also, he told us one thing that really, you know, stuck out to me. He told us it's not about wanting to win. It's about refusing to lose. And if you refuse to lose, you you just simply won't. <laughs> and that's what I have to say. All right. Oh, my gosh. The, the coaching, I mean, like, Benny's getting me fired up. I'm ready to play for Coach Mouth <laughs> with the uh, – with the philosophy, but yeah, no, it's, it's a, and by the way, you guys are, uh, again, you're, you're taking his, uh, his mantra of, of, you know, what he's saying and, and you're, you're putting it on the floor. That's ex exactly what I saw when I watch you guys on live stream or when I see, see you in person, that's that, you know, if you're going to beat Flatbush, especially this year, you're going to have to beat them and outwork them and out and out, you know, do them and every facet of the game. So, okay. Aiden for you, coach Ryan Coleman. I mean, he's just, uh, the best of the best and uh you know championships after championships and he just you know you compete in the in the obviously in the public school division um in california so the the, the, the caliber of, of uh you know who you're playing is, is all over the map and obviously some kids who can potentially play division one you know and just a, a different athlete so what is coach coleman and, and you have actually played for coach coleman this is your third year um does his philosophy change every year based on his team or his is his philosophy we are going to play Three point shooting. You know what? What is his philosophy, and has that? Does that change over the course of the year based on his, uh, you know, his clientele or his, uh, you know, horses that he has? Uh, yeah, he does not change. He sticks to one thing throughout the year. He does. He we run a very like special offense. You know, he's very like like Benny said. He's very into defense. You know, rebounding hard. He he said he always says defense wins games, which is true. I think it's true. Defense wins games. You know, you got you got to win off the off, off the defensive rebounds. You know, stay possessions. But a lot of it is offensively. He he knows how to work around special defenses, which is like like something you don't really get very often from a coach. So and he just he sticks with that, and that's it. If you run it, you run it. You don't, you're on the bench. You know. Right. <laughs> and and I'm assuming you're uh, you're running it pretty well because I don't think I saw you on the bench at any point <laughs> this tournament. So <laughs> you, yeah. you you either you're listening to what he says or Coach Coleman is bending his rules a little bit for a star player. But uh <laughs> good job. All right, Pop, you have one final question for our for our two MVPs. Yeah, I mean obviously um from from each coast you can each make the argument that at this point in the season you know, you're the top teams on your coasts. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Eula or Valley want to want to think otherwise. I'm sure Megan wants to think otherwise. Uh, but at this point, you know, having one Colbert, having one Cooper, uh, you have the right to make that argument. Um, but obviously, uh, a bigger dog than Cooper or Colbert is Sarachek. And so I'm interested to hear both of your thoughts as to, you know, looking ahead four or five months from now, who you think is going to win Sarachek? Oh, he, you didn't say who's answering the question first. Neither, neither of them are jumping. To the <laughs> neither one. Yet. They don't want to answer this one. No. All right. Well, well, we started with Aiden at first. So let's go with Benny now, right? Aiden had our first question, so Benny, you can answer it first. All right. So I think, uh, yeah, I think I don't really have much of a choice, and uh, I kind of know that we're going to win. Uh, I do think we're going to win. Uh, I think we outwork every team. We put in so much effort, so much work, so much sweat, and I just cannot see us losing. All right, there it is. Be prepared. Flappish is ready to take home another crown. Aiden, what do you got? Who do you? Who do you? Who's your uh, Sarachek champion four months from now? Uh, four months from now, it's a, it's a tough question, but I, I think it's I think it's us. You know, uh, I mean, I can pretty much say what like Benny said. You know, we, we work hard, but you know, four months from now, God knows what would happen. You know, who is where? You know. Um, but I, I, I think I think we have a very good chance of of being there. You know, I, I'll be excited to see if it'll be us versus uh, Flatbush. You know, in the championship. Yeah, that's, that's it's, uh, a lot of our audience would be excited too because that's going to be that could potentially be a super game. You know, if it transpires, and you know, doesn't it even necessarily need to be in the championship? You know how seedings work and everything. Um, and, and as you said, Aiden, there's a lot of basketball left to be played. You know, things will factor itself out. So. Um, I just want to say one other quick thing, um, Aiden. You know, I'm pretty intense and locked in during games, but I think your dad was right there. I mean, we were about four people away from each other, and and he was as locked in as I've ever seen. So he is, uh, you know, I know you had that support there with him and, and Benny. You know, obviously your family's behind you. So to both of you guys, congratulations. You are our coolkeepers.com 
players of the week. We want to wish you the best of luck and Hatzlacha on the rest of your seasons. And uh, stay in touch, and we will send you those gift certificates. And, uh, you know, you can rock those uh, new cool keep of gear. And uh, we look forward to uh, potentially maybe even seeing you back on the podcast uh, when we have a Sarachek MVP, you know. We'll, we'll leave that to, to be determined. Thank, Thank you. So. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Here we are with our Camp La Vie Power Rankings. So the rankings are out. You know, uh, I personally was at the Globerman Tournament. Uh, Akiva Popper sees all the messages that come in. So, you know, these conversations are, are – the preseason was based on, you know, what we thought and everything. And, you know, we had some good, uh, you know, back and forth with kids and teams. So, you know, now that we have a little more sample size, we're going to get into our power rankings. So at 19, I believe it's a new 19 – uh, not that you're looking to be 19, but they're in the top 20, is the MTA Lions. Uh, Pop, why, why is uh, MTA uh, sliding in at number 19 in our power rankings? Yeah, well, they lost to Orr by 11. Um, and then in Cooper, they just didn't look so good. So um, I, I would expect MTA to go up from here. I don't expect them to sit in the basement all year. But um, for now, they really haven't done anything to prove they belong elsewhere. Got it. There you go. At number 18, we have the uh, Rambam Ravens. Rambam, um, they had a, a win and a loss, I believe, in this past uh, week or two. What have you seen from them? Yeah, well, they've had the three-point win over Kushner at home, um, which included a half-court shot, which maybe we'll see later on. Um, so that was their one win, but then they got beat up by YDE. You know, they got they got smacked by Flatbush. I, obviously, you don't expect um Rambam I'm sure wasn't expecting to beat Flatbush but you obviously hope to keep it a little closer than it was um so um while it did beat Kushner and obviously by them being at 18 that means that Kushner is ahead of them um uh, I think it's because the fact that they weren't able to compete with YDE that we have them here right so you, you it, by the way, there you, it just shows you it's not only what you do in your wins it's what you do in your losses too because a lot of times you know when you step up the level of competition you got to step up your game as well because if, yeah, if you I show mean, us show. We're not just interested in seeing, hey, can you beat the team which is 17 or 16? We also want to see, can you compete with the team which is 12 or 11? Or if you're at 12 or 11, hey, can you compete with the team which is at 3 or 4? Right, um, absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to go 17 and 16. 17, we have the Hank Hurricanes, and 16, the Kushner Cobras. Um, Hank, um, I believe... They had a loss this week. Uh, nothing really transpired. Anything in, in Kushner, you, the aforementioned victory over Rambam. Um, anything you want to add about those two teams? Yeah, yeah. So, so Kushner lost to Rambam, but then they, they, they beat Hank. So they have the head-to-head -head oh. there. Um, now, obviously, you're like, okay, well, shouldn't Rambam be ahead of Kushner and Kushner ahead of Hank? But we don't make everything based on head-to-head. -head, and we do take every game into account. Um, so even though Kushner beat Hank and lost to Rambam, it's kind of, well, we haven't seen them against uh, one of the other higher teams, so I don't know what to do with them. Um, so it was more that Hank and, and Rambam didn't show that they deserve to be higher, rather than Kushner proved that they deserve to be higher. Um, but obviously those three are in flux at this point. Got it. And then we have coming in at 15 and 14, we have, uh, in, ironically enough, they just played each other in a, in a thrilling double overtime game. At 15, we have Ori Yisrael, and at 14, we have the Heschel Heat. Um, as, as I said, they had that game where it was, I believe the game was at Heschel, um, and it was yeah. a double overtime victory for Heschel. And, uh, you know, this is really the first we've seen or heard about Heschel. Uh, they haven't really been in any tournaments or anything. And, you know, they beat Ori Yisrael, who is a team that we said could compete with teams. And, uh, you know, yep. we just feel like th those are those two teams uh, in, in where they belong. Yeah, I think it's important to point out just for everyone watching that we're recording this on Tuesday night. So Heschel's playing a game as we speak. Um, but that's not taken into account for this power ranking. This power ranking is as of Monday, Tuesday. So, um, so yeah, the only game which Heschel's played at this point um, is against Orr. And because they won, we have them ahead. Um, now, Ord did have that win against MTA. That double overtime game was great. Rosada had 36, even though he was cramping up. Um, again, those two kind of in flux, um, but we basically just flipped them from last week. Right. And also, two, two teams, quickly, just the last thing about mentioning about them, two, two teams that will give uh, some higher teams on their, on their schedule uh, in the rankings, you know, good game. So that, uh, you know, definitely have room to improve there. 13 and 12 and 11, we'll kind of pack them in together. We have 13, we have the Hill Heat. At 12, we have the YDE Thunder. And at 11, the Waterbury uh, Wolfpack. Hillel was, uh, was a Cooperman, didn't have a great showing. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, I think they lost early on and, you know, 
some of those those constellation games are kind of hard to judge because you don't know who's yeah. playing, who's sitting. Uh, but you know they haven't really done much this year to show us that they're anywhere but where they are. Uh, YDE is again they lose to the teams that are better on paper and they beat up on the teams that uh, are below them. And uh, right. Waterbury is that is that great? Uh, you know, you know, be ready every night as far as you know. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um... I mean, I think the argument could be made that Waterbury deserves to be below YDE just because YDE was, uh, they didn't get blown out by Hafter or DRS, but I mean, they weren't super competitive in either of those games. Where, but Waterbury does have a win on their resume um, of against Hank. YDE um, has the win against Rambam. I mean, a lot. Some of this is also what oh, we that, expect. That's that's some resume there. Where are you applying for a job well, with those three wins? I mean, that's no, no joking. That's they well, do have three wins. You got to beat the teams on uh, who on your schedule. Some of this also is what we expected coming into the season. You know, we're we're only in November, early November, so right. uh, we do we do still take into account expectations coming into the year. It's very hard to judge based on one or two games. Right. Absolutely. And here now we are into our top ten. At ten, we have JEC, which. Um, I don't know if they've had a game since uh, our last power ranking, so not much else to say. We, we, we're just basing them on on how they performed at the uh, Mac and David tournament. Uh, again, a good team. Uh, they have some uh, tests coming up up in the next week or two, so we'll get right. we'll, we'll get and, more information on them. And again, they're playing right now, but we're not taking that game into account for this right. ranking. If, although, if you've ever seen Popper's uh, cave, he's got like forty two screens of Chiba League basketball. And everyone, <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> that that is not happening. But yeah, they are playing right now, so we'll uh, we'll see what you know how that how that goes. So now we have our the top nine. At number nine, we have the SAR Sting. Um, SAR, um, I saw them in Globerman. They had a they had a game early on their opening night home opener against Fresh uh, at the Hive, and Fresh came in and kind of uh, took care of business and. Uh, you know, really elevated them over them in the rankings. I think our earlier rankings, we had it reversed. We had uh, Frisch below SAR. So, and I saw SAR in the Globerman tournament. A good team missing uh, missing probably one of their better players. Uh, it's hockey is uh, a big guy is injured. Her, yep. He's uh, coming back shortly. So if you're going to play them, hopefully you uh, play them yep. now. And, uh, and Mateus Elias, the uh, junior also, he told me he's about two weeks away or, or maybe even a little less. So not at full strength, but a solid team. They got a great junior in uh, in Weiss and uh, Glick at uh, senior to Politsky. They're, they're, they're a good squad. They're going to get better once they're they're fully healthy. Yeah, I definitely expect them to get better. Um, I really don't see them dropping down at all from here. It's really only up, I think, for them. Uh, or potentially they could remain stagnant, obviously. Um, right. they've, they've demonstrated at this point the ability to, uh, to stick with teams which we think are better than them. Uh, but uh, this is certainly one of the less good SAR teams that we've seen in a little bit. Um, and Well, it yeah. could have to do with that, that Shanzer guy who uh, Bichron and, uh, might. was talking about, right? <laughs> Taking well, his it could have to do with Shanzer. Losing Shanzer and New Earth and Sklar, it's very tough to, to come back from that. Yeah. Uh, this is not a surprising drop-off. Right. All right. And there we have at number eight, we have the DRS Wildcats who kind of dropped a, a few slots in our ranking. And and why did they drop? They had they had a win against, I believe, YDE took care of business, but then they got smacked by Mag and David. I think it was 25 points or so, maybe even a little more. Um, you know, a loss like that shows me a lot. Right. It shows me that maybe you're not in the level of those top five teams and you're just DRS, you know, kind of outperforming your uh, your your skill level right now, but they will grow well, as a team. I, th I think it's exactly that. We discussed this on the first episode. I don't think DRS, we had them at six last time. I don't think DRS right. has the top six. I don't think they're number six when it comes to talent level. I think they're lower than that. And obviously in that Mac and David game, the talent gap was too big to overcome. So it wasn't that surprising to see them uh, being non-competitive. I think they lost 52 to 31. Um, but I, I wouldn't overtake that game into account so much just because... Um, the expectation here is that they're able to beat teams at similar talent levels um, because of, of the chemistry that they have. And so that Mag and David game isn't necessarily representative of that theory. Right. Absolutely. So that's where we have uh, DRS at number eight. At number seven, making a jump, I believe they were number nine around last week as the first block. Yeah, they kept telling me, number nine, number nine. I'm like, well, let's show me. You're like, well, we beat SAR. I'm like, okay, beat someone else. No, you, that's, that was a good win. So we, at number seven, we have the Frisch Cougars. Frisch is, uh, you know, a team where I, I think that this year, it, definitely unlike last year, where we had 
the superstar and arguably, maybe not even arguably, the best player in the, in the Yeshiva League last year, um, Alex Zakheim. This year, there's not a star player, and I think we we kind of alluded to this earlier on. You know, yeah. Rona Human, Ezra Burke, who it's Noah Fishman, who I, I didn't mention in the first week, and I and he told me that I didn't mention him when I saw him. Uh, actually, no, he didn't tell me. Someone else did, and I go, you know, you're right. So uh, <laughs> shout out to Noah Fishman, a good ball player. They have they're always going to have five kids on the court. Um, who are who are talented, solid, and can play the game well. So you know they didn't in Gloverman. They um, they played some close games. They won a couple. I think they ended up losing in the quarterfinals at uh, at Gloverman. But they're they're going to be a good team, and they're going to always compete. And they're uh, you know at number seven. And they uh, we're going to mention them later in our uh, in our uh, game of the uh, the week spotlight. So we have fresh yeah. at number seven. I- and I would just note, in addition to the, I and mean, they had those close games against Shalhevin and Rasti that they lost, uh, but they also had a game against Jewish Culture, uh, which is an all underclassmen team, which I think will be really good in a couple of years, and has been competing in these uh, high level tournaments and getting beat up in order to win later on, uh, which is great for them. Uh, Frisch was down fifteen nothing to them, and they Frisch won the game, but that is not. Um, a sign which I would want to see. You don't see title uh, contenders go down 15 nothing like that. And obviously, this is only November, and there's still plenty of time left, but that would definitely be a sign of concern for me. Right, right, absolutely. And here at number, speaking of concern, at number six, we have, um, you know, I believe they were number three in our power rankings last week. We have the uh, North Shore Hebrew Academy Lions. So North Shore, I have, uh, you know, they struggle. They really struggle. We talked about the uh, the uncertainty with their big three, with the injuries that they were uh, trying to overcome and fight through. And it really showed in uh, Cooper. They came in in Cooperman as the number one seed. And obviously, the Cooper tournament didn't do as much research as we did because we would not have put them as number one, uh, you know, based on, on on the net here and now as far as the, their uh, availability. Um, so they struggled. You know, they their big guys – and what what really happened is they got beaten, but they got uh, beaten by a lot by Hafter. I believe they lost by twenty points. And then it kind of, yep. you know, kind of uh, you know rolled from there. They were just getting beaten. What, but once once you're in consolation, it doesn't really matter so much. Right, but, absolutely. But and, they were actually poppers. It was not a close game against Hafter. Right, and you actually pointed this out to me, which is something that um, um, I, I totally agreed with. Is they don't really have much depth at all. So when you have injuries from your big guys. If if, yeah. the, if the talent level's here and then you're going down, you know, four levels below to the next player, we're talking about superstar right. players. They, they, they don't have Sorry. they don't have they don't have the level or they don't have the depth of talent to choose from that some of these other schools have. Um, right. Just just based on the size of the school and and the team composition. Now that's not to say the guys on the bench can't play. It just right. is obviously a significant drop off uh, when you have you know Carmeli is not a hundred percent and. Uh, Bisadet and Zarka, or they're all banged up. Everyone is banged up on the team. <laughs> like, it's, it's basically a disaster right now. And there's really n- uh, who knows how this is going to go because this could totally spiral. Um, right. I mean, I kind of felt I felt they needed to get kicked around a little bit. Uh, obviously, I didn't expect them to lose by twenty to half there, um, but you know, you almost forget how to lose, and now you remember what losing feels like, right. and now you're at a, a point where let's you know let's see how you respond. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And so they also have. They, the, yes. Go ahead. Sorry, Pop. Yeah, because they were non competitive, obviously they had to drop a, a significant amount, but it's not shocking that they were not, that they lost after. Right? It's not It's not surprising. Right. No, absolutely. And speaking of Hafter, Hafter makes a jump in our rankings. They go from, I don't remember their exact slotting. Eight but last time. Eight. So they, yeah, they jumped up to, they took the three spot, three tumble forward as opposed to North Shore tumbling back. So Hafter had, had a, had a really good tournament. I mean, they came in as in the in the Globerman. I'm sorry, in the Cooper tournament as a eight or nine seed. They played uh, uh, Katz Yeshiva in the first round, back and forth game. Half there was victorious, led by Kevin Levy, and then they went into uh, North Shore, which uh, you know, I, I personally thought it was going to be North Shore, you know, taking care of that game. And uh, like as the, we aforementioned, they they got smacked. I mean, they smacked North Shore, ended up winning by twenty, and then. They faced Flatbush, who they had faced earlier in the Magnum David tournament and lost by a lot of points. They lost by a lot of points again, which doesn't really mean that Hafter's not a very good team. It just shows you where Flatbush is right now. You know, they're just on, on kind of their own tier right now with um, the Shiva League teams. Maybe Mag and David wants to say differently. But um, yeah, Hafter at five, again, they don't have as much depth as, as some other teams, although their starting five is really well-rounded. 
um, inside outside game. And, uh, you know, I think that's why they're at number five. And, you know, they have a, a tough game coming up again with Flatbush in the, uh, you know, next week or so. Yeah. And I mean, obviously it's a, it's a talented group and one which belongs. And we knew, we knew as of, you know, a couple weeks ago, they belonged in the contender conversation. We just needed to see the results. And uh, obviously now they have the results. Right. Absolutely. And now we are in the top four. At number four, we have the uh, TABC Storm, who I think we kind of had them at four or five last week. Uh, so they, they again, they were in uh, the Cooper tournament. Um, they beat their their most impressive victory to me was kind of a loss. They they lost to Valley Torah, I believe. It was an overtime game. So I think they showed us – I forget who they played in the first round. I think it was more of a mismatch um, out of town school. But so in, in the first game, they played Mimo, which was more – Oh, right, I right. Them, I wouldn't call it a major. Uh, right, I, I take that not back. I thought team. it was like someone else. No, I thought no, it was someone Mimo's else. not a bad team, but they, they actually played poorly against Mimo, and they, but they won by four. Um, but certainly it wasn't uh, a game to write home about. And in the Valley right. Torah game, you know, obviously um, on paper, okay, wow, you played close against Valley Torah. That, that's great. You went to overtime. But they blew a six-point lead. They uh, missed a couple of free throws with 11 seconds to go with the game tied. Uh, so they had every opportunity to win that game. Um, and, you know, uh, you could argue that they're better than Valley Torah regardless of the result. Um, and, and, you know, it's a good learning experience given how young they are. Absolutely, yeah, and that's why they're number four. So, and number three, um, this kind of a uh, kind of kind of what you just said about TABC. They had an opportunity at the end. They missed some foul shots. They gave the game away. So the Ramaz Rams coming at number three in our power rankings. Um, you know, obviously, I have a lot of knowledge about their program and their uh, their their results. They had a phenomenal tournament at the uh, Globerman tournament. Um, they did eventually lose to Shalheven in a thrilling championship game by one point. But I think what Ramaz showed in this tournament was their victory against Eula in the semifinals. They played Eula in the uh, preliminary games and they lost by 10, revamped the, the uh, game plan. And then they came out on a Saturday night in, I mean, as as a home court for a not home court game, you could never imagine because it wasn't Eula's tournament. But obviously the, all their students were there. It was a great environment. And Ramaz really just controlled that game from beginning to end. And Ramaz, you know, showed that as as their competition against Shall Have It. Ohayon, Kushner, uh, uh, Bobby Segura had a phenomenal tournament, and Evan Glassberg, the point guard, a really well-rounded started unit with some depth pieces coming off the bench. And uh, they also, you know, faced off against the Hebrew Academy of Miami, also known as RAS. I, I can never say it right, so I always say Hebrew mm, Academy Razzie. of Miami. Right, there you go. It's, it just doesn't roll off my tongue like it does poppers. Um, a really good team, and they beat them. So I, I think Ramaz is... Uh, you know, disappointed they didn't end up winning the uh, Globerman tournament, but uh, it's it's going to be a hungry bunch, you know, and, uh, you know, ready to go. And I think their first game of the season is against MTA tomorrow night. So, you know, that that, that could be uh, could be a little, uh, you know, home co home remedy right there. Yeah, I think group, this group of three, four, and five are uh, teams which belong in the uh, – are obviously championship contenders. They obviously belong in that conversation based on how they've played up until this point based on the talent on the team, based on the coaching on the team. Um, but they haven't gotten it done yet in-game when it comes to winning the big ones. Um, so um, they, it feels like that, that three is a tier unto itself at this point in the season. Obviously, they will separate over the next three right. months. Yeah, I, mean, I totally, totally in agreement with that. And, I, and I, that brings us to number two. So last week we had, I believe it was Mag and David as our uh, number one. And this season, this I'm sorry, this week we dropped them down to number two, and uh, I I don't really see much of an argument. Obviously, Magan beat them in their home tournament by one point, back and forth. This tournament, Flappers kind of controlled the game from beginning to end. Um, Magan had a great tournament. They beat Valley Torah, and I think they beat them handily. Uh, you know, a, a really like a, a, a good Valley Torah team. We're not sure how good because we have to see them play. They had a lot of losses last year as far as personnel, but obviously a good team. Um, and, uh, you know, Magan handled them nicely. One thing to mention is um, Jackie Haber, Jack Haber is uh, is injured. He's going to miss about a month from our, uh, you know, sources, they tell us. But I did look, and it, it sets up nicely. If you're going to get injured, in, in first of all, Fuhr Schlamer and, and, and a special speedy recovery to, to Jack Haber, who had some injuries last year and is a phenomenal player. I looked at their next month of games. I think Jack can take his time and, uh, you know, heal up. It's uh, probably a little softer spot on their schedule. Um, so, you know, but, he'll be back, but you know, it just happens to be, they play Flatbush in just over a month from now. So he, right, he right, better right, actually right. keep to that timeline. 
exactly. I think it was like December 12th, like right, right when we heard about someone uh, informed us four weeks or so, you know, and obviously we'll see how everyone heals. But, uh, you know, he's got some some people on the on the on the lower tier of the rankings or higher, sure. you know, however. But it, it should be noted also that he did not play in that game on Sunday. He got hurt on Saturday. Correct. Right. So that was a game he did not play in again in two weeks prior. He hit the game winning foul shot. So uh, Maggie David, number two. And uh, again, I think there's going to be a lot of flip flopping throughout the season between a lot of these yeah. teams. And, and I would just add in that Valley Tory game, I don't think the final score is representative of how close it was. It wasn't that close. It wasn't it wasn't 25 for it's bad or whatever. The final score was 64 or 36 or something. It wasn't that bad, uh, but they did shut down Ethan Liss, um, which was you know impressive how how he. Uh, they were able to eliminate him from that game. Um, so that was certainly an impressive performance, but obviously, you know, they lost to Flatbush, so there's right. no way so we that's, can... So hold on, drum roll, please. So the number one team in uh, in the country as of November 7th, I believe, Tuesday night, is the uh, Flatbush Falcons, led by Benny K. Grukeda, um, Isaac Cooper, Ronnie uh, Shia, um, Haddad, uh uh, so many guys that the, the mid range Mamba, I was talking about Shamma last week, or so many kids. And, and again, they're it's kind of what Benny said at the beginning of the, of the episode. They're not letting teams beat them right now. They're just playing on a on a different level. They're they're playing fast on mm -hmm. offense, fast yeah. on defense, hitting yeah. threes, bringing kids up. Sammy Jamal, a sophomore coming off the bench, who I think he even started last year. They have a lot of weapons, and, and their coach is, is throwing kids in in different spots. And and remember, yep. valuable minutes happen early in the season, and especially in big moments when you get that experience, and that's really going to show up later. And I think I think they're the clear-cut number one team in the country for Yeshiva League basketball right now. Right. I, yeah. Well, first of all, you need talent to win, and they have talent. Um, but secondly, they have the combination that you're looking for outside of that, right? They hustle. They work hard. Um, you know, they push the ball. They defend well. Um, but also they looked very prepared for that tournament. Um, you know, it looked like the coaching staff had them prepared. Um, and when you have a, a big man like Keita, when you have shooters, you're going to be dangerous. Obviously, they weren't the number one spot just based on the performances so far. Right. And it's, it's also like Benny just on defense is just like, like I said, I mean, I, I remember seeing him sophomore year. When it when it breaks down, you have him sitting at home, you know, waiting under the basket, yep. and you know, good good luck to you. So uh, those are those are our power rankers. The power rankings brought to you by Camp La V, and uh, you know, good luck to all teams. And again, next week or two, and the next uh, episode comes out, I'm sure there's going to be some movers, some shakers, upsets, great games, you know, disappointments for teams, and uh, you know, we're going to see what happens and transpires on the court. So that is there for the power rankings. Our next. Uh, our next segment here is brought to you by Holy Schnitzel. This is where we're going to bring you the upcoming game of the week, which is voted on by you, the audience. Uh, Poppers put that poll out there on Yeshiva League Pass Instagram and uh, came out, you know, pretty pretty uh, heavily heavily uh, skewed to this game. This is going to be a great game. It's November 12th on a Sunday. Uh, North Shore, which is number five in the rankings, is going to travel to Paramus, New Jersey, to take on the number seven Fresh Cougars. Um, you know, we don't put spreads on the game, but it, it's it's uh, it's going to be a close game. We're going to each of us are going to give our predictions. Um, so the interesting thing that, here is, you know, how healthy is North Shore, right? Because we know what's what's we don't know what's going to be until we we see. I spoke to uh, Coach uh, Shalom of North Shore. He said, you know, they're definitely banged up. You know, and Shalom is a straight shooter. He's not saying anything that's not not truthful. And he said. You know, Carmilly's kind of on a on a, a limit on a, a minutes restriction. Um, Abiza Des had a, has the thumb problem, which he you know banged up again in Cooper, and, and that's the problem with the thumb. It's you shoot a basketball, you play defense, everything yep. is with your hands. It's not easy to you know to to not re injure that. And then Ben Benny Zark, I'm sorry, Jordan Zarka has um, you know I think his foot or ankle is something that uh, you know he's dealing with. So again, it's tough. And then you have the Fresh Cougars who are chomping at the bit, right? If you're going to play North Shore, you want to play them now. They want to uh, take care of business. And, you know, if you can get two early wins against SAR and and uh, North Shore, that looks pretty good on the resume. So, you know, what do you see coming into this game? And then we'll give our, uh, you know, our, our predictions on the upcoming uh, game of the week. Yeah. Um, well, I, as you mentioned, obviously North Shore is is uh, wounded right now. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a blood in the water game, uh, right? I think Every team in the league senses the blood in the water. Obviously, North Shore was expected to be at or near the top of the league, and, and there's a clear drop-off right now in performance, which can 
obviously at least partially be attributed to the injuries. Um, so uh, no doubt about it, Frisch wants a little revenge for last year's championship game. Oh, by the way, I didn't even realize that. Right. This is a champion. That's funny. I'm usually on top of my game, Popper. But there you go. Expo- exposing me for not doing complete research <laughs> or not even realizing. All right. This is a championship rematch. Great call. Yeah, and it's so also, it's, and, and North Shore has no games between now and then. So this is their first um, time to get healthy. In, in, <laughs> in the, well, right. It, it, this is their first game uh, in Yeshiva League play. Um, whereas Frisch has one game before the North Shore game in Yeshiva right. League play, and they already played SAR. So they'll have had, they all played two Yeshiva League games before North Shore play has played one. So. Right there in uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I, yeah, it's going to be a great game. Um, the also the the other thing to consider is is North Shore has there's no question if they did strength of schedule, they have the most lethal schedule of anyone. I mean, obviously their division is really strong this year with all the if you look at the power rankings, you know, besides you know um, maybe Ramaz and TABC, come some of mo- more of the higher ranked teams are from the uh, Eastern Division, and then they're out of town. They're out of conference games or against. I think Mag and David and uh, maybe TABC or uh, all top teams. So they they don't really have a chance to get, you know, take to slide into it. So it's going to be a great game. Um, I don't know. Something tells me that North Shore is just going to be ready and they're going to be hearing the chirping of the wall. And, and I'm going to give a prediction where, where North Shore wins the game. I, 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 if I look at it on paper based on, you know, what reality is right now, what I think, I just feel like the heart of a champion, I think Coach Allen is going to get them – reading these these paper clips, you know, the newspapers or the internet posts and stuff about, you know, focusing on their, what they haven't done. And, you know, maybe in a week from now, um, a little less than a week, they will get a little healthier. And if, say, I should say with a disclaimer, this is a, if their big three play, even a limited capacity, I think North Shore wins the game by five or six points. Yeah, well, you know, the problem with, um, the problem with suggesting that, um, North Shore is going to use the newspaper clippings or whatever as an incentive to to lock in is that if we both pick North Shore, then the, the, if anything, the pressure is back on them, right? Right. <laughs> um, but I, too, along similar lines, I should know, we, we do not. Right. Discuss, I was going to say, we do not discuss. We do all. not discuss our, our picks beforehand. Uh, I'm also going to go with North Shore. Um, I do think that um, if you, if, if with the big three in in danger here, uh, you know, hurting a little bit, uh, obviously I would take Frisch on a talent level. Uh, if you take those three out and they don't play whatsoever, um, the, the drop off is real with North Shore. Uh, but I think the reserves are going to be able to give them enough in this game, such that when uh, their studs are on the floor. Uh, they're going to outscore Frisch enough to the point that um, they'll be able to hold them off when they aren't on the floor. Uh, so I, too, will pick North Shore. I'll have it by three. Okay, um, there you go. 48-45, let's say. Oh, wow. I, I wasn't going to give a pretty yeah. score, but if, if we're – all right, I said six or seven. You said 48-45. I'm going to say uh, 54 to 48. That's uh, okay. that's my but prediction. I, but, again, I should, also, I should also note this is – like I said before, it's all about how you respond – and it, it's totally conceivable that Frisch wins this game by 30 points. If, yeah. if one team uh, is going to blow out the other, it's going to be Frisch. North Shore is agreed. not going to be blowing out Frisch in this game. Totally agree with that. And, and I will say this. I think it's time, and I've seen this player play. He's a junior, uh, uh, Eli or Ellie Bacor. I think phenomenal player. I think it's his time to step up. I think he's got to, you know, he's, look at his wounded warrior buddies. And, and, you know, he's won a championship with them on JV. Um, I think he needs to step up. He's a really, really strong player. And he's healthy, and I think this is a moment where he can, uh, you know, maybe help put the team on his back and, uh, you know, kind of step over over what he's really expected to do early in the season. But I think he's needed. So we'll we'll see what happens. And that is our game of the week. We both pick uh, pick North Shore in a close game, and uh, you know, I'm sure the fresh uh, love or hate that we've been getting may continue. But you know, maybe it's just gonna be uh, put right back into us. So we'll see how that how that plays out. So now our next segment, and this is uh, exciting. This is our plays of the week. In plays of the week, people sending uh, poppers clips in all the time, you know, some layups that are hit, some things, you know, some even missed shots, you know, some things uh, that we see are, uh, we're like, wait, we're, this is plays of the week. What is This is, uh, you know, and then you see some phenomenal things that we just can't pick everything. 
I mean, you and your staff are, are in that in that video room rewinding. It's like like the New York uh, City uh, the studio when there's a overturned call. You know, they're going back and <laughs> forth to, uh, to to really to really give us. And this is you know just someone's opinion. Keep sending them in, even if you thought you had a great play. This is just what our staff voted on as far as plays of the week. And this week, I believe it's uh, seven plays of the week we have. Yes, it was. There, there were. There was a clear drop off after these seven plays. Let me put it that way. But all seven plays belong on this list. Right. So here it is. Enjoy the plays of the week. Levine. Oh! Oh! Oh my goodness! And it counts! Ingram passes on the baseline now with four seconds. Let's see if they can get the shot off. I think that's going to count if it goes, but it's rejected by Kata. Around Jay, snatch, block. Foul's gonna be called. <laughs> oh my god. Wait one second, shoots it. No way. Oh my oh god! god! Oh my god! Five seconds left in regulation. Pilgrim throws it way down to Stettner, and he gets the shot to go. And Fish stuns SAR. Wow, those were those are some plays of the week, as you said. I mean, those were insane. And and you know that number one was you know I was on my laptop watching that firsthand, and that was I don't even know what was better, the pass, the finish. You know the the just the mayhem that ensued, and that it was a championship tournament. What a great! That's the only 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 thing that's going to block the block. I'm sorry, as, as I as I use, use the wrong words, or maybe I'm right. That stops Kada this season, right? Is uh, right. you know his number two was the block and dunk where he just like you just don't see that in Shiva basketball. You don't see you don't a high block guy. No, but yeah. but that the, the the pass and the the bucket combo the winner championship had to be number one. Yeah, so those those are great. And anything getting plays of the week, you know, congrats to all those teams and, and kids who took part in those plays. And uh, again, keep them coming, keep them uh, sending in, and uh, you know, keep making moments happen that we're here, happy to share. So that was that was our our Yeshiva League Pass uh, tip off podcast number two. Um, it was a great episode. We we thank uh, Benny Kada and Aiden Beatron for uh, you know joining us. They're MVPs of their respective tournaments. Remember, we're going to have a guest or two on every week. Every guest who is um, coming is sponsored by Cool Keepers. You're going to get a gift certificate to those store to that store to purchase something. And uh, you know we want to thank our sponsors, CoolKeepers.com. All your uh, Judaic gear, yarmulkes, um, you know, sitzes. They're cool sitzes, which are dry fit material. You know, I'm not the biggest sitzes guy, but uh, I have a I have a package coming my way next week. I will be rocking the uh, the cool sitzes. Um, yeah. So it, I, poppers, I know you're wearing sitzes no matter what. So they're uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we don't need to worry about that, but I, I am going to gonna wear them, and I'm looking forward to them. So we have coolkeepers.com. Check them out. They're in Teaneck, New Jersey. Their website, which you're going to see here on the show, which you can go and, uh, you know, mention uh, you saw them at Yeshiva League Pass Tip-Off podcast, and, uh, you know, see what else uh, they do for you there. Yeah, and then you know, our um, – yeah, we, we, we've, we've got their cool logo on the screen, but the, the website you can see in the description, and you can, you can click the link there and see more about them. Right, absolutely. And um, – then our other sponsor this week is um, Holy Schnitzel, which is, it, it, it doesn't even need to be talked about. Holy Schnitzel is just, you know, it's funny, living here myself in the five towns, anyone who comes in for a tournament, a game against Hafter or DRS, you know, they usually end up at Holy Schnitzel. It's just one of those <laughs> spots where after the game, win or lose, you know you're yeah. going to be winning by eating there. So Holy Schnitzel is awesome. They're on uh, Uber Eats. They're on uh, their website. You can call, you can pick up. It's in uh, the five towns in Central Avenue. And then they have locations uh, throughout, you know, the tri-state area. I think even Miami. Um, so they're all over there. 
holy schnitzel it's uh it's a great place and uh you know poppers that was a a, a great episode it's always great uh working with you and uh you know it's funny that we all have a lot of similar things and we don't really prepare either you know, our <laughs> personal opinions with each other but we uh you know kind of uh you know are aligned in a lot of ways so a great pleasure working with you and uh We'll look to see what happens on the court these uh, coming weeks, and we'll be back with you on episode number three in uh, our next uh, show.